younger son had an affair with his brother's girlfriend, tried to marry her, and got cut off by the whole family. Now he's alone and blaming us for ruining his life. I had always believed that I had a loving family. My family consists of me, M55, my wife Sophia, F50, and our two sons, Jared, M28, and Nathan, M25. My wife and I have spent our entire lives trying to make a good home for the kids, and we've instilled what we thought were good values and virtues in them. I can't help but wonder if maybe our parenting is somehow at fault for what happened because it is so heartbreaking and cruel that it has torn the entire family apart. Jared and Nathan always had a loving relationship. I'm not saying it was always rosy, but it was like any other sibling relationship. They had their share of secrets, competition, and memories. They were rock solid at least, that's what Sophia and I thought. Nathan did show streaks of jealousy towards Jared, but I chalked it up to normal sibling behavior. My wife agreed with me, and it was never serious enough for us to consider in the first place. Simple things like when Jared got selected for his school football team, Nathan was happy but glum for a few days because he felt inadequate. Sophia and I sat him down and told him that he couldn't be expected to have the skills of his brother because his brother would always be older than him. He understood what we were saying, and it wasn't as though he was vicious or malicious about any of this. And it wasn't always my younger one being jealous of the older one. There were quite a few times when it happened the other way around. For instance, Jared never had very good social skills when it came to girls. He was a shy and nervous boy in that regard, whereas Nathan was more outspoken. He always had more luck with girls compared to Jared, and Jared used to feel upset and left out. Then my wife and I would go and counsel him. What I'm trying to say is that we were by no means a perfect family, but we were what I would consider a normal family. We were happy together, we had our share of fights and bad days, but we patched up, and most importantly, we supported each other through thick and thin. When Jared left for college, he had a drastic personality change. He became more extroverted, partied, went to clubs, and was finally breaking out of his shell. Sophia and I were surprised at the change, but we were very happy for him. It was in college that he met his now ex-girlfriend Haley. She was two years younger than him, and he was apparently smitten by her when he first saw her. I don't know about the private details of his relationship, but I do know that he introduced her to the family at around the two-year mark when he was 22 and Haley was 20. She was a warm and kind girl, and both Sophia and I liked her. She and Jared looked good together, and we could sense that he was very happy with her. Later that day, Jared came to me and confessed that she was the love of his life, and he was sure that she was the one he was going to marry. I told him that I was happy for him, and I also told him that I liked Haley. However, my advice to him as a father was not to take things too fast and to wait a little before proposing. I told him that both of them were young, and as they would grow, their beliefs and outlooks might change. So it was important for him to be completely sure that both of them were compatible in the long term, and not just in love. We met Haley a couple more times over the next year and a half. Now during this time, Nathan was not at home. Both my sons had gone to college in other states by then. Nathan couldn't make it at that point, and therefore, he did not meet Haley. A year and a half later, Jared and Haley started having problems. He wouldn't share it with us, but he just stopped bringing her over and looked tense all the time. Whenever we asked him what the matter was, he would just say that they were going through a rough spot. He didn't say anything else, and my wife and I knew not to push him into sharing things he was not comfortable with. A few months later, we found out that Jared and Haley had broken up. He was inconsolable for a while, and Sophia and I made regular trips to see him and help him deal with his heartbreak. She was his first ever girlfriend, and it hurt like hell for him to get over the relationship. We kept asking him what the reason was for the breakup, but he never told us anything. Their relationship lasted a little over four years, and it took him another year or more to get over her completely. He is now dating a woman named Miriam, F26, and he seems happy and at ease with her, so Sophia and I are happy and relieved. Nathan, on the other hand, had a series of relationships and flings. He was never serious or stable enough to reach the level of commitment where he would actually introduce us to somebody. We let him be because he was an adult, and we assumed that he knew what he was doing. What slipped our attention, however, was that Jared was trying to avoid spending time with Nathan ever since his breakup with Haley. It never struck us initially, and we chalked it up to coincidence, but in retrospect, I understand what was happening. Jared avoided attending family functions and didn't come home as much. He had been an introvert and did not particularly like these gatherings, so we never pressured him. He stopped coming home and used to send us tickets and have us fly to his place. This kept going on, and both Sophia and I didn't even realize that something was seriously very wrong with our son. There had been a few times when I had told him that he needed to come, but he always made some excuse and shifted it onto his busy schedule. However, Nathan's behavior remained unchanged. He came home regularly, and nothing he said or did made us think that things were tense between him and Jared. Things came to light only a few days ago when Nathan broke some news to us. He had told us that he wanted to introduce us to someone, and he was hoping that Sophia and I would be accepting of it. Both of us were quite excited because this was the first time he was introducing us to his girlfriend. We were looking forward to meeting her, but when I saw who she was, it felt as though somebody had ripped out my vocal cords. I was at a complete loss for words. 
He came home with none other than Haley and dropped the bomb on us that Haley and he were getting married, and it was her that he wanted to introduce to us. Sophia and I were speechless and kept staring at both of them for at least a couple of minutes. A part of me thought that he was joking and that it was some big prank on us, but I knew from the look on his face that he was being dead serious. The first thing that came out of my mouth was whether Jared knew or not. Haley looked very uncomfortable, and Nathan said that Jared had known this for a long time now and was okay with it. Now I know my sons very well, and I knew there was no way at all that Jared would be okay with this. I told Nathan to stop lying and that I did not believe what he was saying. He lost his temper on us and started accusing us of favoritism and not being happy for him. He said that when Haley and Jared were a thing, both Sophia and I couldn't stop fawning over her, and now we can't look her straight in the eye, even though she is the same person. He said that he was expecting us to congratulate him, and we weren't even accepting of his relationship, let alone supportive. He told us that we had double standards for accepting Jared's relationship, but having such an extreme reaction to his relationship. I told him that what he was doing was unpardonable and, quite frankly, no less than a sin in my eyes. I wanted Sophia to back me up, but when I looked back, she wasn't there. Five minutes later, she came downstairs with all of Nathan's important documents, and she threw them in his face, telling him to never show his face to her again. He said that he had come to invite us to his wedding, but we didn't deserve an invite. I said that attending such a wedding would be one of the worst nightmares of my life, so I was glad he was rescinding his invite, for we wouldn't have attended anyway. He stormed out with Haley, and Sophia and I just stared behind him in disbelief. By the time I could process whatever had happened, Sophia had already called up Jared. She asked him if he knew, and he said that Haley had cheated on him with Nathan, which is why they had broken up. He said that initially he hadn't known that she had cheated with Nathan, just that she had been cheating with someone. Jared said that they had tried to move past that, but it kept haunting him, and he realized that he did not want to live like this for the rest of his life. He begged her to tell him who the affair partner was, but she kept blatantly refusing to reveal his identity. All this stress had taken a toll on Jared, and he then decided to break things off with her. Two months into their breakup, she was already in a relationship with Nathan, and that was when he knew that his own brother was the one his girlfriend had cheated on him with. I asked him if he ever spoke to Nathan about this, and he said that he had. He asked him why he did that and said that Haley was ultimately not family, and he could expect her to pull off something like this, but never Nathan. Nathan's only reply to him was that we all do shitty things when we are in love. That was the last time the two brothers had spoken to each other. I asked Jared why he never confided in us, and he said that he did not want us to think poorly of him, and this was his personal issue with him, and he felt that getting us involved would not have been the correct thing to do. Listening to him having to be the bigger person, even though he was the one who had been wronged, completely broke me from the inside. I had tears in my eyes and apologized for not being a good father to him and for not questioning the distance between him and Nathan all these years. It has been three days since Nathan and Haley visited us, and both Sophia and I are in shock. We had decided that we would not be attending the wedding. I told her that I personally did not want anything to do with Nathan and Haley, and they were dead to me for all I care. Jared, on the other hand, told us not to ruin our relationship with Nathan over this, but for both Sophia and me, this is the right thing to do. I got a call from my parents yesterday. They live down south, and while we don't meet that much, we are close. When my kids were born, they set up funds for both of them, and this was supposed to be for their college. I was a little hurt by that because I felt that as a father, it was my duty to prepare and save for them, and I made funds for them too. In the end, the boys ended up getting partial scholarships and used my funds, so both of them have the funds set up by my parents intact. My father had told both of them on their 21st birthday that this money was for them to use as they deemed fit, and he would not have any conditions on how they should spend it. Well, apparently, Nathan was planning to use this money to finance his wedding with Haley. My dad called me up to give me a stern talking to regarding our attendance at the wedding. Nathan had complained to him about our lack of support, and dad was furious. He was practically all but yelling during the call, and he said that he had raised me better than to abandon my own child, especially on the most important day of his life. He said that Haley was a lovely girl and that I should trust the judgment of my son and not create unnecessary fuss for no reason. He sounded quite angry, and I was getting livid as well. I could not believe he would side with Nathan and Haley after what happened, but as he kept rambling, I realized that he did not even know the entire Jared. Haley, Nathan drama. And of course, how could he? Jared had not told anyone in the family, and Nathan was not the kind to be candid and upfront about the entire situation. I put the phone on mute and asked Sophia if we should tell him what the reality was or just let it be. Sophia said that he needed to know, or else everyone would be maligning us and Jared for not standing by family, when he was the one who was completely in the wrong. When dad was done with his tirade, I told him that I needed to tell him something, and he had to be willing to listen to me with an open mind. I then told him about how Jared and Haley met, how we had met Haley as Jared's girlfriend, and Nathan was not there. Then about the troubles that they were facing in the relationship, and finally about the breakup. We also told him what Jared had told us once we asked him what was happening with the entire Nathan and Haley engagement. We told him every bit of detail that we knew. 
At first, he didn't believe us and accused us of playing favorites and cooking up a story to save ourselves. He asked us to prove this entire theory to us. Sophia took out her phone and said that she was sure that she had a photograph from one of our meetings. She found it and sent it to dad. He didn't say anything, just sighed deeply into the phone, and told us he would get back to us. Early this morning, Sophia got a call from dad. She relayed their entire conversation to me, and things are not looking good for him. After I spoke to dad yesterday, he gave Nathan and Haley a call and asked them if what we were saying was true. Nathan tried to defend himself and lie, but dad called out his bluff. He then said that Nathan would not be receiving a single penny from the fund that had been set up for him. Nathan started crying on the phone, begging his grandfather to reconsider, but he was firm. He said that he would not be paying for a marriage based on betrayal of the family. Nathan then lost his temper and told dad that on his 21st birthday, dad had told him that he was free to use the money however he wanted, and this was how he wanted to use his money. He said that it was completely unfair that he was not getting the money despite being promised the same four years ago. He tried to gaslight my father into handing over the funds, saying things like he wasn't a man of his word if he didn't give him the money as he wished and that it was his right to have the money. So the thing with my dad is that he is a very short-tempered person and has always been that way. Given his nature and now his age, he really does not have the patience to deal with drama and bullshit. Nathan was apparently complaining the entire time on the call, as he thought he would be able to strong-arm my dad into giving him the money. But he had had enough. Dad told him that he had initially thought that he would not give the money for the wedding, but would have given it to him in the future to use, but now, because he was acting so entitled and unapologetic, he had decided that he wouldn't be giving him the money at all. And to add fuel to the fire, he said that this money will now go to Jared. It was probably then that Nathan realized that he had dug his own grave. He started apologizing and saying that he had said these things in anger, but it was too late. Dad did not relent, and I know that Nathan will never see a single penny of that fund in his life. Dad had basically called up Sophia to inform her of the recent developments and thanked us for telling him the truth. He said that had he given that money to Nathan and been even indirectly responsible for funding the wedding, the guilt would have eaten him alive. He also told us that he was planning to make the roots of their entire relationship public within the family so that Nathan and Haley's real faces are shown to the world. Sophia was a little worried about the proposition because she felt that Jared might not agree to it. She said he had moved on, and dragging him into this filth and muck again would do more harm than good for him. Dad, however, said that he had already spoken to Jared, and Jared said that he was okay with the family knowing and to do what he thought best. Dad is adamant that he is going to blow this up, and he said he just wanted to ask us if we had any objections to it. Sophia said that she was okay with whatever he wanted to do, as Nathan was dead to us. She said that she would, however, talk to me and let him know what I had to say on the matter. I told her that I was more than happy with what Dad had decided to do. I know that this might come across as petty, but cheating is something that has always repulsed me. To know that my own son was involved in an affair, and that too with the girlfriend of his brother, just made me lose all respect and love for Nathan. I can't help but feel that maybe there was something wrong with the way we brought him up for him to turn out like this. I wish this never happened, but I know at this point in time, my priority should be to take an unequivocal stand for Jared and not worry about the family reputation. The worst that can happen is that people will judge Nathan for what he has done. And in my opinion, he should be judged and ostracized. His actions are unforgivable, and no amount of redemption can save him. I know this is all going to turn into a huge drama involving the entire family, and I am scared about the repercussions of it on Jared, but if he is okay with it, I am no one to say no. I would give anything to not be in this situation anymore, but I am helpless, and this is what it is now. Update 1, all of us received a forwarded message from dad. I am copying the entire message here. I have always loved my grandkids and tried my best not to be biased. I am not saying that I have been a hands-on grandfather, but Judith and I have always tried to love and care for them to the best of our abilities. When Jared, Nathan, Bianca, Roxana, and Tyler were born, we set up funds for each of them to use as they wanted. This as they wanted was with an unsaid caveat, that we would not allow any of them to use this money for immoral activities. I wanted to give this money to Nathan for his wedding with Haley, who seemed like a very sweet girl when Judith and I met her. I was more than happy to contribute to their happy life. Imagine my shock when I found out a few days ago that Haley was actually the ex-girlfriend of Jared and Nathan and she got together as a result of her cheating on Jared. It seems so far-fetched to be true that my first reaction was to not believe this information. However, to my utter dismay, it is, in fact, how things have transpired, and I am now taking back my offer of funding the wedding. What I choose to do with that fund is now my own prerogative, and none of you have any claim on it. I am also informing you that I will not be attending the wedding because I cannot see myself being part of such an unholy union. It was imperative for me to bring out this information in case Nathan and Haley try to malign me or question my principles and ethics. What you now do with this information is up to you. This message has been forwarded to everyone we consider close family. I don't know if he has sent this message to Nathan and Haley as well, and I am not interested in knowing whether they know what has hit them or not. My sister called me up when she received the text and asked me what on earth was going on. 
I told her that Sophia and I found out a few days ago, and we were as shocked as anyone else. She is mad at Nathan, understandably so, and has said that she will not be attending the wedding. I told her that Sophia and I were not attending the wedding either, and she heaved a sigh of relief. She felt that maybe she and I were okay with this or were willing to put up with Nathan for the sake of appearances. I told her that we had severed all ties with him and had nothing to do with him anymore. She asked me if I knew whether Nathan had received this text or not, and I told her that I didn't know and was not particularly interested either. I don't know who else has received this text, and I don't know or care, how Nathan is going to fund his wedding. All I know is that I had raised him better, and if he has chosen this path for himself, then he is no son of mine. Edit, Judith is my mother, and Bianca, Roxana, and Tyler are my sister's kids. Update 2, the wedding is off. Nathan came home 10 days after my dad sent the text. He broke down in front of us, saying that we are the reason he is so unhappy and miserable. Apparently, the recipients included some extended family as well, and all of them refused to attend the wedding. There was a lot of shaming and name-calling, and Haley couldn't handle the stress of it all. She called off the wedding and has not been responding to his calls or texts. I can't say I felt sorry for him or that I wanted to comfort him. It's just that I did not know how to stop his crying and kick him out of the house. And I'm glad I didn't because I found out that Haley had told her family a completely different version of the story. She had said that the breakup with Jared happened a year before it actually happened and that he knew all about her dating Nathan and was okay with it as well. Everyone on her side of the family believed her stories. But when word got out about the reality of their relationship, everyone was disgusted with her. She has been disowned by her parents and ostracized by her family. Her cousins, whom she is apparently quite close to, have stopped talking to her, as have her friends. Her friends had a good relationship with Jared, and this was told to me by Jared himself. They frequently hung out together. Her friends had also thought that Haley and Jared's breakup was decided mutually. But ever since dad sent the text, her friends have deserted her too. She is miserable and all alone, and Nathan is shifting the blame on us. He says that we had no business getting unnecessarily involved in his life and that his life was ruined because of us. Both Haley and he have lost all goodwill and respect from the people they were close to. I told him that it might seem easier and better to him to shift the blame onto us, but the fact of the matter was that he dug his own grave when he decided to get involved with his brother's girlfriend. He tried to pull off the same true love crap with us too, but Sophia was having none of it. She was quite stern with her treatment of him and said that he was the only one to blame and that he was a repulsive creature to her and she couldn't believe how her son could have turned out like that. I tried asking him again why he chose to pursue Haley, knowing about her and Jared fully well. He didn't have an answer to it and said that Jared was the one who was holding a grudge for far too long and that these things kept happening in adulthood. I asked him whether he was sorry for breaking his brother's heart, and the only response that he had to that was asking us whether we were sorry for sabotaging his marriage. I knew then that he was a lost cause, and no amount of understanding or conversation would make him see sense. I told him that this was the last time the doors of my house were open to him. He was free to do whatever he wanted to and go wherever he wished, but he had no place in my life after doing what he did. He said that we love Jared more than him and that we are making it so obvious that it is hilarious. I told him that we had always treated both of them the same, but if he thinks this is us playing favorites, he is a moron. I told him we are siding with what is right, not with Jared. And just because he cannot see or realize that what he has done is wrong doesn't make it right. He was obviously not interested in anything that I had to say. He gave us a long, hard glare and stormed off. This happened last night, and he has blocked both Sophia and me everywhere. I can't say it doesn't hurt to lose my family and see it shattering in front of my eyes, but I feel helpless because I know that there is nothing that I can do to make it whole again. Update 3, it has been a month since the wedding was called off. Haley and Nathan have broken up, and Haley had the audacity to try and get back with Jared. She called him up apologizing for what she had done and asked him if he had another chance with her and, with that, a shot at forgiveness. Jared blocked her number after that and told us that she might even try to pay us a visit. Fortunately, none of that has happened. Nathan is still of the belief that he hasn't done anything wrong and isn't talking to anyone, or rather, no one is talking to him. We don't know where he is, and that worries me, but I don't think I should be extending an olive branch. That's just how things are right now, and now that everything has settled in, I guess this is how things will be in the future as well. I had never thought my family would ever have to go through something like this, but I guess fate had other plans, and I cannot do anything other than standing by what I know is right.